Ah, another live stream. Ladies and gentlemen, it is scientifically proven, in fact, to be your friend, Mike Brady, from Ocean Liner Designs. Never gets old saying that, you know. <laughs> I was at the um, Titanic uh, artifact exhibition yesterday with, with a friend of mine, Georgia, who, uh, who watches the channel and uh, was just wigging her out by walking around saying that over and over again. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How are we all going? Great to see you all. We've got a nice little uh, consortium of Ocean Liner Designs people sitting in here. It's good to see you all. Someone said he's got the dad glasses. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I need those to, uh, to see. <laughs> this is not a fashion statement. I promise you. Uh, waiting in the wings, we've got our friends from Titanic Honor and Glory, but it's good to see you all. Welcome to the first live stream for Ocean Liner Designs of 2024. And I could not think of any better way to spend it then touring Titanic with our, with our friends from Titanic, Honor and Glory. And I thought uh, what we'd do is something a little bit different this time. We've seen a lot of first class and I thought we should see a little bit of second. But we'll go into that in a minute. First, I should introduce the gang. Um, we've got them all here in the background in no particular order. I'm just going to run through the, run through the list. Um, joining us for the first time for a, a Titanic, Honor and Glory tour type live stream, we have Jack Gibson. Animator extraordinaire. Hello, Jack. How you doing? Hello. Yes. Um, it's nice to be back on these streams after a long time. The last one I think was the Emperor. So um, been a long while, but it's nice to be back. Um, I'm back. Love these streams. Love these tours. So gonna be very nice. Nice. Yeah. The last time we we were on a stream together was for the Empress of Ireland, which is funny because you and I talk almost every day. And uh, oh yeah, people I guess would just see you pop up every now and then and not realize that you are really what is uh responsible who was responsible for the beautiful visuals that we've had recently um in our in our videos but we'll oh. talk about your work a bit more i guess as we as we go through uh looking around titanic yeah we've got kyle hudak how you doing kyle hello i'm doing well good to see you you've been busy it's recently nice by the looks of it there'll be uh oh, updates yeah, coming out i've been Oh yeah, I've been very busy. I, mean, I started off uh, the month working on more uh, alpha stuff, uh, st structural model stuff, uh, but for the last week or so I've been scanning uh, archival materials uh, that we recently acquired. And it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's hundreds of images. Got to scan, scan, scan. It was similar when yeah. I was doing my illustration work, but like most of the work involved is actually looking at photographs and plans and things and trying to decipher it. And I reckon I spent about 80% of my time doing that and 20% actually drawing. You know what I mean? I wonder if it's the same with what yeah. you've been doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mainly it's just scanning. Uh, oh, I'm going to have to stitch some together too because they're extra big images. Oof. It's got to be done. And then we've got uh, Matthew DeWinkler. One of the like Kyle, one of the original Titanic Honor and Glory gang. Good to have you, Matt. How you doing? I'm doing well. Hello, Mike. It's nice to be here again. Good to have you. People are always clamoring for these. And mm -hmm. I think, first of all, obviously the work's fantastic. But I just think we have good good banter, the, the few of us who've done these. You know, I think we just make it fun. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 fun to talk Titanic and explore Titanic. And on that note, I, I want to thank you for exploring uh, my Titanic plans in one of your uh, most recent videos a little while back. That was great. You, you made it fun. Yeah, you made it fun to explore. I I, ma I made a comment on that video um, saying how, which is kind of funny because you just said to Kyle like, you stare at pictures of titanic and you, you look at these things for hours on end while you're creating your works and i've been beaten to death by my deck plans i guess because i just stare at the screen and at the tiny little like lines on the plans for ages and it's it gets it's get, it gets tedious after a while but you made it more fun you made it new and exciting for me to actually look at the things that i created again well it's a little unfair because i get to sweep light. in you know and and do the fun part which is look at the potato room <laughs> Yeah, that was yeah exactly yeah. Well, they came in a lot of and, handy, and because my yeah yeah I'm glad. I'm, mm -hmm. Well, no, I decided we, I know we've got a slight delay, so I'm trying not to to cut you off. But I thought you'd get a kick out of this. I don't think I told you, but my uh, my girlfriend visited oh. Australia recently. She lives in England, mm -hmm. 
and she was so keen to play Titanic, Honor of Glory. And if you're watching this, Katie, hello. And um, she was really keen to get her hands on it, and she was walking through the ship, and her and I were both horrifically lost. And so, at hand, I had your plans, right? And so we're, mm-hmm. we're walking around looking in third class and Katie is like, whoa, what's that thing there? There's this really bizarre little feature that maybe we'll see when we do our third class tour. And I looked at it and I had absolutely no idea what it was and very quickly looked down at the plans, glanced back up and then decisively with full confidence said, well, that's a locker, as if I'd known the entire time. <laughs> entire time, yep. Uh, I'm glad they could help you be a little bit more Im- impressive sounding to <laughs> everyone else in our our lives because you know that's that's what titanic plans are for <laughs> you know after you know after years of studying sometimes you just wonder like is that symbol correct so you know yeah uh, and i i have full confidence in my plans 100 percent, everything is completely accurate i i you know <clears throat> not really i, but I still, might be detecting sarcasm just a little bit yeah a little bit of sarcasm but you know uh, something special uh, i thought of this time for the stream if you, for anyone who's watching I created a discount code for my Titanic Plans website, which is titanicdeckplan.com, and the discount it gives 25% off if any plans, $50 or over, but the discount code is all one word in capitals, Friend Mike Brady. <laughs> and it's only good for 24 hours, which is the stream. So Friend Mike Brady. It, you heard it here first. I This was not prepared. That's the first time hearing about that. not prepared, yeah. Oh, didn't work exactly, but yeah, friend Mike Brady, twenty five percent off, just for you. That was perfect. But yeah, uh, mm-hmm. but but Matt, are there spaces in that? There's no spaces. It's just friend Mike Brady. Friend Mike Brady in friend caps, which is kind of how Brady. I say it anyway. Friend Mike Brady, exactly. That's the whole point. That was why I made sure that it was in caps. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's your friend Mike Brady. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, it's best. All right, let's move on. But yeah, on that point, it's, it's, it's glad to be here. Couldn't recommend it more. They're, they're really beautiful. Really recommend it. The video was a lot of fun to make and they're beautiful plans if you go to. Um, it was titanicdeckplan.com. Is that right? That is correct, yeah. Yep, titanicdeckplan.com. You can have a little have a little look around. Well, why don't we board Titanic? And um, unlike our last uh, stream, today we're doing something different and we're checking out second class. Gents... Second class on the Titanic is often overlooked. Why do we think this is? Well, without getting too political about some things, it's the middle class being in the middle, or I guess I guess I won't call it being a, a political statement, but imagine that you have an older sibling and a younger sibling. Being the middle child, you often just get ignored because you have the one that is special, that came first, that gets all of the attention. First class with its beautiful accommodations that you have the rich people, the famous people. And then you have third class. You have the stories that are supposed to be more heart grabbing. The, the, the poor immigrants going to the new world who have the some of the worst um, luck with getting with saving, getting the, getting the chances into the lifeboat. So this this kind of in this Venn diagram of being on board Titanic, you have second class. And so it kind of just gets like your attention gets grabbed one direction or the other and you just miss the middle of the ship, which is second class. You miss these areas. You miss this space of, on Titanic and these passengers. That's my opinion yeah. on the matter. Yeah, I think it, 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 it's just a big part of it is just this, this such a need to focus on the stark difference between you know first and third class like oh look at first class they're all in their pajamas and then with their paneled rooms look at third class they're i don't know drowning or locked behind gates or whatever it's uh you know, the, the narrative thing with all stories that people like to write about titanic don't leave a lot of room for nuance it both even even within like the depictions of first and third class but they certainly aren't going to mention second class it's not convenient to the story. Yeah, it was interesting at the Titanic Artifact Exhibition yesterday here in Melbourne. They've got um, their version of a, a first-class cabin, like a recreation, and a third-class cabin. And uh, it's interesting that. I think people, like you said, they love the extremes either end of the scale, like the absolute glory of first class, the um, Spartan kind of, you know, bareness of third. But... Mm-hmm. 
I, well, it's, well, the irony of this is that second class on Titanic, it's often been repeated, and you might think it's a myth that second class on Titanic was as good as first on other steamships of the time, but that is absolutely true, as we are probably about to find out, because second class's beauty might shock you, I think, if you hadn't really looked into it too much before. So where we are at the moment is a really interesting little um, promenade. It's an enclosed promenade. Second class passengers could board Titanic from a number of different ways. So where we are right now is, is about level with the ship's aft mast, the main mast, behind the fourth funnel. On This is sea deck, I believe. Is that right? Yes, that's sea deck. Brilliant. Now, was this a main boarding point for second class or was this kind of like a secondary? Because I can see we've got big gates here for, for getting on board. Yeah, this is one of the main hubs for second class to board the ship. I believe this is where they had, uh, where second class boarded Titanic in Southampton, one of the main places mm -hmm. off the top of my head. You know, they have that famous Father Brown photo of Titanic at Southampton. And I think looking down the port side of the ship, I, I want to say that this area, of uh, you know, those doors that are your on my screen, I think there might be a delay. Um, you look down, one of those doors mm. are, those shell doors are open and those gates would be swung up. And you have one of those like famous terminals um, at the white, at the Harlem, at the Harlem Wolf, at the White Star Line dock is um, stationed there where the gangway is just, you know, it doesn't, it's not angled or anything. It's just completely horizontal level, it goes straight into the ship. Brilliant. So they could just walk straight in and they're confronted with a, mm -hmm. quite, a quite a nice little cozy space. Um, now, I know we had a, a bit of a, a, a list of places that we wanted to go visit that Carl had put together. Um, and Carl actually wanted to start on the on the boat deck. So shall we just walk in here and, and stroll on up real quick? Oh, yeah, we'll head up to the uh, head up to the top, head up to the boat deck out on, out on and deck. make our way down. Um, Another interesting thing also about second class is that uh, it, it was nice enough that my understanding is that there were a lot of people who easily could have afforded first class, but uh, they preferred to travel in second, you know, one, to save money, and two, uh, you know, more maybe a little bit more laid back, you know, a little nicer. Because, I mean, a big part of the, 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 the story that I think that's missed for... Um passengers boarding titanic in life at sea that people don't realize partly maybe because of the film that makes especially first class seem very stiff is that and we may have talked about this before that um time at sea was very relaxed and very casual and people would get dressed for dinner as was kind of de rigueur but during the day there are photographs of them just, just chilling chilling out yeah chilling reading a book yep playing some cards it was like an opportunity to escape especially for first class, you know, the society that back home, as we know, John Jacob Astor and his wife were doing for good reason, probably you know, escaping scandal, escaping, you know, the pressure of stocks and what have you. And you get out to sea and just sit on the deck chair and not worry about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you wanted to start here, Carl. We're at the, uh, the aft end of the promenade deck. What's, what's uh, special about this place uh, for second class? Uh, well, uh, honestly, not much. Yeah, it's just, uh, it, it was... Uh, don't, don't be mean to second <laughs> class. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did have a good view above first class. And uh, first class... Yeah, they can look it. down at their at their uppers right here. Ooh. This, is, the, this yeah. is what we always talk about, how weird it is. Yeah, I've just walked over to that point where you can look at, down at first class. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and, and they could look up. I mean, it's basically first class was sandwiched between second class. And that's very funny when you think about it. Uh, especially when you consider that, yeah, they apparently did not like that. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, of course, this aft section of the boat deck, you know, they had you know, lifeboats took up this area. You had, you know, a lot of benches and stuff. The kennels were back here. There's a door on the back of the fourth funnel deck house. And it's got little bars on it. Yeah, and I'm just that's walking where they up kept there. The dog. So the yeah. um, the old story about you know John Jacob Astor saying he was going to go and release the dogs 
finally answering the question posed at some point in the late 90s, early 2000s, who let the dogs out? John Jacob Astor. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, uh, of course, you've got the fourth funnel up here. And if you want, I think if you wanted to go to the top, there was another door in this deck house. I think it was, um, I forgot which side, the starboard side. Starboard there was side. A fan, starboard side, yeah. And there was a fan room. And from that fan, fan room, there was a, a ladder in you that, that would take you up the funnel. There's like of course, that's up. not in here in the demo. Uh, so you, on top of the second class staircase deck house, there's this smaller kind of um, structure, this little thing with a couple of doors in it. That was a room holding the motor for the elevator for second class. Second class, of course, just had one elevator. First class had the other three. What was unique about that? I mean, not many ships even had elevators at the time, right? So what's the significance of giving this to second class? Well, they overused that to death. Well, not really, not to death. Well, I mean, the ship did sink, but it was quite popular. Uh, ironically, the, the elevators in first class were not in a good spot. And, and forward of the grand staircase they were often overlooked but since second class only had two stairwells and this was right in the center of the main stairwell which was perhaps a better place to put a elevator akin to i believe lusitania mauritania where they, you had you walked around your elevator to get up and down the ship um, your decks this was something that everyone was waiting for all the time so the elevator workers were definitely or the single elevator worker on duty was very often busy and that was just a young lad who i believe uh lawrence beasley once asked why, why aren't you do you want to go play deck games or something like that he was just a child and he's like i'm not allowed to play deck games or anything because this, you know he's on board the ship to work so he was on the clock that was his duty mm -hmm. so i've got these two interesting little um vents on either side which seem to be like an extractor. So were these similar to the, the one forward of the grand staircase to help with the pressure differential when the elevator is yeah. actually operating? Uh, I'm not sure, Matt, you might know better what their actual purpose is, but they're called a uh, Gibbs mm -hmm. extractor vents. Yeah, it helps with the, the, yeah, you know, elevators when they, basically it's creating like a, like Mike said, like a, it's, it's a pressure vacuum that's happening because like almost like a, imagine a pump or, uh, I, I'm just not going to be anything correctly technical, but you have a plunger and you're pushing it down and you have the air has to go up or down or somewhere. So that helps with the air being extracted out. And I don't know if you have it in the demo and there's no way for us to jump, but there are little ducks that go from the bottom of those Gibbs extractor vents to the side of that little house right there that go to the um, elevator trunk that helps you extract air or um, through the elevator shaft as the lift goes up and down. I might go and have a quick look at those elevators now while we're um, while we're talking about it. I d so everyone in the chat is first of all congratulating me on my fantastic "Who Let the Dogs Out" joke. So shame on you both, the three of you actually, because Jack didn't laugh. But second of all, um, I did I did want to talk about the uh, the kennels for a minute there because I think it's interesting. But I'm just going to show the um, the elevator shaft here with the doors beautifully wood paneled little call button showing the the deck indicator panel the um i think it's a well-known story but on the night of the sinking um john jacob astor says who's the richest man on the ship in first class um they were traveling i th i think with their dog they had an airedale named kitty and uh the story goes that he said to his wife as he was getting on the um as she was putting putting her into a lifeboat he gives her his gloves and says i'm going to go and and let kitty out and she swore that she saw the dog running up and down the deck. And for a long time, it was thought that it may have been so that he went down into the bottom of the ship because on Olympic, were the kennels further down or were they in this fourth funnel deck house? I think I might have lost them. Has something happened? Oh, I can't. I got booted from the uh, from the Discord chat. Well, I can't hear them, but they can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be an Ocean Liner Designs live stream. 
or chat if there wasn't a technical problem, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to sort that out, but while I do it, I'm going to expertly multitask, because that is, a, a, as far as I know, a true story. I'll see what the guys have to say about it. I'm just going to get out of here real quick, reopen my Discord and get that, get that sorted. Sorry about this, guys. Classic technical problems. It is a... Um, it is an interesting story because the uh, the Astors, I think I mentioned, were fleeing um, a, a very awkward situation where he, John Jacob, had married uh, and impregnated a much younger woman, and um, he was actually younger than his one of his sons, and was f essentially fleeing the uh, the fallout of that. And th they booked Titanic to come back. They were traveling with their dog, and in theory, for the voyage, the dog was housed below the fourth funnel here. Now I'm going to try rejoining the chat. I think you guys will be able to, um, they can still hear me. I just haven't been able to hear them. So I'm going back in. What in the world's been going on? You can hear me now. Oh no. You guys are live. Oh, oh my gosh. Hello. Okay, we're back. Hey. Oh. We're back. We're back. Quick question. Back. I tried saying something earlier. Yeah. Uh, I, don't make any more of those yeah. terrible jokes first. That's what, that's what's <laughs> going to happen. <laughs> Do it again, and we're oh. and you're not getting back in here. We're quitting. <laughs> I gotta run off real quick for like five minutes, but before I do, I want to leave you with a question: the Gibbs extractor vents. There's one over the three elevators, first class. Why are there two over the one elevator for second class? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to get really technical, or do you want us to just? wonder about it they had two on olympic and they and they they had two on olympic originally and they removed it after the maiden voyage but they kept the two on titanic oh riddle me this so yeah that's all i have to say about that <laughs> it's interesting because that machinery house this is so typical of us to be like we're going to show the interiors of second class and then get fixated on like a piece of machinery but the um the roof of that that structure there is still intact on the wreck, right? So that's one of the few pieces of the stern wreck no. that you can actually make out. And it's still there, and there's still even little bits of the the wood decking on top of the roof. It's it's fascinating. It's so well preserved. You can even see the winches and machinery through the little hole in the in the top of the roof there. It's fascinating. I think we've lost Kyle for a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. But what we might do is um, have a look on through. Now, Kyle's, uh, Kyle's itinerary that he's put up together for us to have a look through, he suggests that we um, start yeah, he's out on the boat guy. He's Yeah. And we can head on down um, to explore the outside promenade, um, go down the stairs to the smoking room. And there's an interesting little quirk here, right? Because the stairs, we're on the boat deck now, but the next deck we can leave from this staircase in second class is not the deck below, which is a deck. No second class allowed in A deck, pretty much. Straight skips it. So this is A deck, which we're walking down now. I know you can't. There's a slight delay, but there's a frosted window, yeah, so you can't even look into any first class no. spaces here. You can at least get a little bit of light that will glance in through the the fan room uh, aft of the staircase. There, sometimes, sometimes you get some light unless they shut the door. Mm -hmm get to borrow some light that's the the places to borrow some light anywhere they could just to try and illuminate mm -hmm. the inside of this you know absolutely steel um leviathan of a thing yep so we're now at the uh the b-deck landing and um, this is actually where we started out uh, a little early very close by where we where we started started out this is a, a deck above so we're directly on top of that that boarding point for for second class. So tell us a little bit about this little space. It looks very cozy. We've got some nice little wicker chairs and maybe the room that is um, directly in front of the staircase here at the at the landing. It is a cozy little spot. The the forward B deck landing of the entrance or the second class entrance, what we call it on Titanic. When we talk about these spaces, we have to always make sure we're saying this is the second class entrance, first class entrance, third class entrance, etc. So indeed, the second class entrance, forward B deck, this area right here, you have, you can imagine passengers on their way up to the smoke room or the promenades here. If, or if they're going down, they're waiting for that elevator that's very popular, would be sitting in front on one of those wicker uh, chairs, or if they're just 
on conversing and having a conversation perhaps you know these little entrances and halls were considered to be a, a, a meeting spots before going about your day and it's handsomely outfitted with the same type of oak wood that you'd find throughout the entire ship the same oak that would be in first class was also used in the paneling in uh second class so this is that same cut of oak and you'll find that as we go into the smoke room as well what's and interesting because you're on an entrance hmm. in the staircase you'll find clocks throughout the ship and on each of her most of her entrances so here in this this landing of second class right in right in front of the the elevator mm. you have a clock just like on the tight on the forward grand staircase and the aft grand staircase in first class on titanic and olympic you have so many clocks including the honor and glory clock because knowing what time it is and on board ship because you're so busy just sitting around reading your books or just people watching or conversing you got to know what time it is before dinner super important. important super important knowing mm -hmm. what time it is where you're going they would set the clocks um back as they're going uh westward i believe um mm -hmm. and th so the, the clock system is really interesting because the the way it worked is they had a master clock um on board the ship i believe and then the, the, they were all electronically powered and connected to this master clock and the other clocks throughout the ship is that right were essentially running off a circuit and time to that master clock's time the mag the magneta clock system mm. i believe as it, it was pronounced to have there are t uh Matt, I think we might have missed that entire thing. This is really playing up. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know why we're having issues here. It's interesting. It seems to be um, crashing my uh, my Discord for some reason when I try and talk with you. Sorry, guys. There was like an extended period of quiet there while we were uh, talking with you about... Was in the Marconi room. Oh, I'm back, thank goodness. You're back now. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. I'm sure that would have been really interesting <laughs> right. and detailed and full of inf information. I don't know why this is playing yeah. up so badly. This is, we've done this every time, uh, and we haven't changed anything. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> We haven't, no. Uh, classic. One day it's we'll okay. get through a stream without a single issue. <laughs> One day we'll pay for something that can make this work correctly. <laughs> Oh, okay. I hate, what I hate doing, but yeah. Anyway, the clock in the Marconi room—you can tell—is uh, there's a the, the actual clock that's connected to the system, and then there's a clock adjacent to it, which is connected to which is, says Marconi International, blah 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 time, and it's just adjusted to I think New York or GMT time, and they had to actually wind that up. So yes, there's other clocks aboard Titanic that were not on the system, but this clock, which is for the passengers' use would is wired to the ship's main system and would not have to be adjusted every morning by a steward unlike certain other clocks ta-da anyway it's a complex system because i mean obviously there's a lot of moving parts there we've got yeah the, the yep. main clock you've got some that are hand wound it's... big ship big system big ship big, big system part, many parts yeah actually, i'd love to do a video on that i just think it's fascinating Mm -hmm. um so, uh, i just saw earlier that a fellow named james cameron in the chat says that he um bought a set of plans and appreciates the discount code he literally did i'm not sure if it's the james cameron uh <laughs> i've had a lot of i've had several bizarre i mean this is not my, i'm not going to take any more attention but i've had several bizarre uh orders today as i shared with you earlier <laughs> No comment. Including one, f no comments. But yes, um, <laughs> oh, it's been one. it's been interesting. Yeah. Opposite the um, the elevator landing, 
it's interesting there seems to be some of the paneling here has actually got locked cupboards um do we know what was kept in these these cupboards oh those uh i don't know if kyle's back but i'll take the the um the int the the fun historical tidbit about these right here behind there um is basically the ship's main uh electrical fuse box paneling all right here throughout there so if you open up all those panels you'll have like tons and tons of fuses and switches for we think a lot of second class it's it's, it's up for debate actually what's really behind there we just know it's the main fuse board because above your head you'll see two thick wooden beams which you think are decorative but they're not decorative they're actually hiding all of the ship's electrical cables and wiring mm. that are running oh, um from bow to stern kyle is back and i'll say Kyle's back. One, one of the reasons this is even located here is because pretty much directly below this area is the ship's main switchboard in the uh electrical generation plant the dynamo room and there are all these wires and stuff that came off the dynamos and they went to the switchboard and everything got kind of distributed from there so yeah it all came up from there and it would have went through this area to the rest of the ship pretty much gee not probably somewhere you'd want to be uh, during the later stages of the sinking, I would assume. I would agree with that, yeah. Hmm. I, I would not want to be anywhere inside the ship in the stern, though, in the later stages. Yeah, fair point. Down below, yeah. or in this area. A bit dangerous. Hmm. <laughs> so we'll walk aft, and we'll head into this beautifully uh, decorated room, which, again... It's one of those things where it just looks as good as any other first class liner of the time and maybe slightly you know the generation slightly before titanic that staircase is so so similar to other white star liners like oceanic and, and what have you uh where are we right now in this this beautiful kind of green themed room oh this is the second class smoke room now, every class uh, had its own smoke room. You know, third class had their smoke room, second class had theirs, first class had theirs. And the officers did too. In fact, it, didn't, didn't the engineers have their own smoke room too? Mm hmm. They did. Yeah, everyone had to have their own little room for smoking. Yeah. Almost everybody. It was a big deal back then, chewing tobacco. I mean, we've got spittoons on the floor. It's just. One of those bizarre little cultural nuances that's kind of gone now, but back then in any bar, you probably would have found spittoons lying around so people could spit out their tobacco, right? Oh yeah, there's it's it's disgusting to consider, but there's spittoons uh, even in some of the crew working areas, <laughs> such as in the mail hold. We've seen pictures of in other ships in the mail holds. Uh, you'll you'll find. I bet there were some. Um, throughout Titanic and places that you wouldn't want there to be, such as the officers' um, cabins, perhaps. Even though it wasn't allowed during their duties, um, according to the White Star Line handbook for officers, but you would, it was, it was quite a common thing back then, much more, much more than it is now, as it's luckily gone out of practice. Yeah, this is, this is absolutely disgusting. Uh, so, speaking of something else, I lost you again, sorry guys. I don't know why it keeps crashing, but I caught it that time, so I'm going to load you back up and uh, and we'll go back to Carl while he makes that point. One sec. Sorry, Carl, go on. Yes. Uh, where was I? Yes. Speaking of things that may or may not be disgusting, some people have noticed the floor tiles. Now, here's a fun little thing for chat. Uh, do you love or hate these floor tiles or are you maybe in the middle are you on the fence about it let us know i kind of like it i mean with these seen anywhere else in the ship i don't think i've seen this pattern before nope not anywhere else on board titanic but they're a popular harlan and wolf tile design for other smoke rooms and uh other i think i've seen them in a dining saloon on Harlan and Wolf built ships as well. So this was considered stylish, new, probably in the same color scheme that you see here, black, green, beige. 
if you can call that beige. Like an off-white color. Yeah. Gross. I kind of like it. It's earthy. You know, it complements the green. I mean, it's... it's. Uh, I, I, I'm curious to see what people think. People are saying it's interesting. Karen Trimmer says it's interesting. We Nate Harris says Minecraft. they're all right. Interesting. They're doing the best they can. Yeah, Cal Harv says he likes them better than the garish first class, which is a, uh, a controversial statement. Oh. Oh. That was a mood. What is interesting about this space, though, is the um, the writing desk. Now, in the first class smoking room, was there kind of this like allowance for writing, or was that actually the preserve of other spaces like the reading and writing room and the library? Uh, there were, I think, the same number of writing. There were only two writing desks um, in in the first class smoking room as well. Right. No, I think there were four. I think there were four. I think there were. Uh, hang on, I'm the one who has deck plans. I should know. <laughs> uh, I don't have them open, because. Uh, but I think there were. You know, they they have the the little small uh, walls on the side that were dividing up the bays, and they have the nice little open window with the glass i think there's a writing desk on either side of those yeah walls and i think so i think there's four total i can so smell this room like i can i can just yeah, smell the smoke you know i can almost taste it i don't want to touch i would after a couple of years in service i wouldn't want to touch the walls yeah unreal the um you see these elsewhere as well throughout titanic but the the call buttons seem to be everywhere so there are these little I, I think it's a bakelite button in a brass fitting i'm not sure you might correct me on that but they seem yeah, to be strategically much. placed yeah you know what really like realistically say we were standing around having a cigar why would i be ringing this call bell here uh for this room you'd be wanting the smoke room attendant to come to you and order another drink pretty much that's pretty you, remarkable you yeah I don't know. Back then, uh, for people and wherever they're listening, I don't know what what your what your culture does, but I'll describe what it's what it's like back in 1912 on board a British ship. You don't walk up to the bar and say, "Barkeep, I want to order a, a whiskey and on the rocks or whatever." You have to at the bar at the long bar, and they give it to you. Or whatever, and you create a tab. Uh, you sit down, and the bar the bar man comes to you and offers a drink etc okay hey wait a minute i did lose you again but one of the listeners alejandro had a great idea which was actually just to use the discord website um which won't crash so i'm just gonna go ahead and rejoin from there and then hopefully this will be the last time we have a little crash like this uh and then next time we do a stream we won't have any at all so i've joined online Just making sure you guys can hear me. Yes. Yes. Can you hear us? We got can you. We and you? I think this is going to solve the problem once and for all. Okay. So. Okay, good. Yeah. Yay. You. Sorry, guys. Uh, thanks for your patience. We've, you know, we've got about 650 yeah. people listening in and um, they're following along. So thanks for uh, bearing with me while I sort out my inevitable issues. But anyway, yes, you were saying okay. that. You can't just walk up to a they bar and order a drink. I mean, you technically could walk up to the the attendant's window because there is a Dutch door that leads to the bar. A Dutch door being not a window that was made by someone in uh, the, who was Dutch, like myself, Matthew De Winkler, but a uh, Dutch door meaning it has a bottom half that can and a top half that are separate, and so it can open up and it can technically be a divider, um, which leads to the bar. But you ring the bell, or you just uh get the attention of the smoke room attendant and just either ask for the, the the bar menu or just know what you want to order and they will give it to you and unlike what many people assume you still have to pay for your alcoholic beverages aboard titanic regardless of class even first class uh their alcoholic beverages were not uh free to, to just order whatever you want you were given a little card the ship's name and everything that kept a, a, your tab and depending on when you want to usually at the end of the night um you would you would pay the, the barkeep and they would keep it and 
either a cash register or a safe in first in the first class um, bar aft of the smoke room, there was an actual safe. And all those records and the money would be then given to the purser, who would then put it in their ledger, which was a very important part of the accounting that was required for the purser and the storekeeper uh, every every night aboard the ship. And that's how you would um, enjoy your alcoholic beverages on board the ship. So right there, yeah, this is how you would enjoy um, living the life of relaxation after after dinner time with your male mostly male friends aboard these ships ladies yeah. could still join you remember we talked about that one of the last past streams you know these these rooms weren't exclusively just for men that's somewhat of a myth but you know it was still kind somewhat a, a tabooish thing for women to be in the rooms but it wasn't totally like a segregated like men only in in these in these spaces but they were catered towards the gentlemen mm. yeah and on, on the point of the bars it, it is one of those interesting little things uh is that you know, it, it it's it is very funny because whenever you see like pop culture very surface level depictions of titanic what do you see all the time you see Bars, you see people sitting at the bars, you see giant multi-level ballrooms and stuff like that. And like these ships didn't, Titanic anyway, didn't in Olympic, they didn't have anything like that. Uh, the closest thing to like a bar that you would imagine is maybe in the restaurant, uh, and that wasn't used as a bar. Yeah, I had um, I noticed something interesting at uh, just to your point. I, Eric Weimer actually just asked a really interesting. Um, question, but we'll come back to this. And then to add to that, James Penko, who's listening in, says this is his favorite room. So hi, James. Hopefully you can join us next time. Oh, he's there? Oh, lovely. Yeah. I know him. Um, the uh, when Katie and I were in London recently, and we went to check out the Savoy Hotel, and we went in for dinner, and we were just checking it out. And um, there's a bar. And they call it the American Bar, because the concept of mm -hmm. having a bar that you can walk up to and order a drink from for the Brits, you know, this is of course a British ship was considered kind of this new fangled idea. And of course, you know, the British gentlemen's club operates exactly the same way as you've described to this day, like any British gentlemen's club will have a, a running chit and you have your drinks basically brought out to you. And it's an account that is kind of gentleman's agreement that you'll settle at a certain point. And so it's just so interesting right. that it's these ideas, they're just transplanting the club system, putting it out at sea. And um, Eric Wymo is listening in, asks a really interesting question. He said, uh, where were the cigar humidors on the ship? Because in theory, you could order um, a cigar, I would assume. I'm sure most men would pack their mm -hmm. own. Were there cigar humidors for second class? On that interesting thing, really quickly, I believe it was after, on, it was after the war that... Um, the concept of an American bar found its way onto some of these uh, oceanic steamers uh, because I was when it, while we're creating the, the THG deck plans, we looked at so many other ships uh, that were designed by Harlan Wolf, and I remember just seeing one of the deck plans that one of the researchers in, on Titanic Island Glory found. Uh, it just it had. It was in it was in one of the smoke rooms, but it it was labeled American Bar, not the entire smoke room itself, but just one little like you could tell it was a countertop, and it just said American Bar, and it was just labeled right there, and I was like, oh wow, look at that. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was eventually you know it was the concept of it was like everything else, um, as the the transatlantic trade was dwindling down from immigrants coming over and it was just, you know, it, it was evolving, it was finally becoming something more popular. Um, but the humidor, uh, it, obviously in first class, oh, where, you, you know, it was catering to more wealthy clientele, you had an actual, uh, what was known as the cigar showcase, which was this large cabinet, which was, was full of, um, drawers of probably tobacco and other accoutrements of of things that could be sold to the gentleman on the, on the top of the cabinet under glass was probably cigars um, and a humidor where the men could look in and pick out which ones they wanted from 
the various you know Cuba or wherever wherever cigars were made. I don't know. I'm not a I'm not an enthusiast of smoking cigars, but I, and uh, there were um, cigar storerooms down below in the ship. So in theory, since this is a smoke room, any cigars that were and you could order cigars there in the White Star Line bar menu that were that was offered in these rooms. The the barkeep um, for this room and his little bar room back there, his little office where all the alcohol is kept, they would be kept in that room. And when you ordered one off the menu, he would go back, bring out the humidor, open it up for you and offer what you purchased. So it's not presented out here. Probably we would be presented on one of the um, two sideboards as an option that you could look at and then purchase. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's just fascinating how beautifully decorated the space is as well, and and very much like first class on on other ships. Mm-hmm. We'll step outside and oh, get some uh, fresh air. Yeah. Oh, you can go on, yeah. Go. Let's step outside. Let's head this over. Room helps to them the, make uh, money too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's uh, catch our breath out yeah, here well, on the promenade deck. <laughs> uh, now of course going on on the promenade, yeah, it, it's kind of funny, really. Um, when we were First, kind of setting up demo four hundred one, we uh, we were only going to have one little <clears throat> like a uh, exterior area that you could see, and it was just going to be that little sliver of exterior between the center door of the smoke room and, and underneath that kind of deck area and the aft second class stairs, and of course, you know, over to, over the next however long. Uh, 401 got snowballed to what it is now. Uh, yeah, it was a fun little, fun little fact about that. But this area in particular, the second class kind of open promenade on B deck, is so it's probably well. They had deck chairs on the boat deck, but this is the other area where they would have had deck chairs too. And uh, of course, you know, from here they could look up at first class. They could look down at third class. And there were a couple of hatches here. These the, these kind of low things with canvas on them. That was the, the both of them were collectively I, I think hatch number four. Mm-hmm. In the um in the and, film uh, Titanic, I'm pretty sure Rose and Jack, as they're heading off, jump down onto these hatches or at least near them at the very least at some point. And one I've lady looks at him appalled. She stands right there and she looks so appalled that Rose is doing some. Some gymnastics right in that hatch. That where the chief baker also helps Rose up. I think Off so. of the, the cargo crane, yeah. Yeah, it's either there or it's onto the I'm cargo welcome. crane down here, yeah. It's one of those two. Um it's, Oh yeah, I think it was the cargo crane. Someone made a point that the times. um the the second class smoking room seems to get a lot more light than the first class smoking room. And um you can kind of see why. It's just covered in windows. Whereas well, the second the, the second class smoke room lavatory gets a bunch of light right there too. Oh, so is this uh was the 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 um is that like astride the number four cargo hatch? It is, yeah. Right, brilliant. The lavatory is on one side, and the which is for men only, and the bar is on the other side. Mm. They're mirrored each other right by the hatches. Is there a sign? Wow, that's great. Oh yeah, I see. There's the bar. He's- it's two little rooms. Mm-hmm. It's such a great little complex for, for second class. Like, it's probably, I would have to say, in my opinion, the best centralized class on the ship because it all seems to be in one spot with two staircases right next to each other, super easy to get around, versus third class where you've got the general space all the way forward and then the corridor connecting it, Scotland Road, and the, the third class general space is all the way aft. First class is spread out all over the ship. It seems to me that second class is very much centered on this after end of the superstructure. Yeah, you're right oh, there. Yeah. Your home is centered for the next uh, couple days. You don't have to go very far. It's nice. Yeah, and I'll make it it's easy to, prop, mate, to, to maybe explore all of second class in this stream too. I might actually, it's such a small area and packed in a vertical space. So, in fact, on that note, we could probably head over back into uh, the forward staircase entrance where we'll find the elevator cab. And, and then we can head down to 
uh, C deck. Great, let's do it. Is the also oh, the elevator cabs uh, at which deck? B deck. Oh wait, elevator cab is on C deck. So let's ah. uh, head in. Let's actually, yeah, let's go into the aft staircase there and go down because that's the one with the cool open well in the center. You can look down. Cool. All right, I'll head back. I just I know there's a slight delay. I just went to the forward one, but we'll head back into the uh, into the aft one here. So yeah, when we were just mentioning that there are two staircases right on top of each other. Um, what's interesting about this one? The, uh, the aft staircase, the one more towards the stern, is, yeah, you've got a clock, you've got beautiful stairs, it looks like first class in another ocean liner from the era, but sitting in the middle of it, you have the ship's mast, which is, of course, extremely tall and needs to then go descend into the, the superstructure of the ship to actually find its foundation. And it goes down from, from the deck here to the deck below, and it's in a very strange position because... <laughs> directly forward of the mast is a doorway which seems unfortunately placed to my mind what were you just saying about how second class was well designed or at least well <laughs> laid out I mean, well I've got, i do have questions about this <laughs> um, it does seem a bit funny doesn't it i mean no one actually just needs to walk straight ahead for like five feet or so you know people like to walk diagonally right yeah i, I mean I, I i like to just suddenly turn to my left and right every now and then when i'm going through a doorway i do it all the time i mean it mustn't have been a big issue but it just rings in my mind as something that surely thomas andrews would have been scribbling down and been like britannic we have to change this because that's it just seems quite funny because um you've got a music stand here the reason why this is important is because there are photographs of the band playing here and um mm -hmm. you guys can talk to this of course but so this this space is another landing it's another comfy space what would this area have been used for um during what the, the heck? Why, are, why aren't my bent wood chairs there okay sorry i am here. i thought i made those uh but yeah right here another uh you got this piano right here um it's one of the two pianos for second class passengers not uh, to, they could use it but um this is where the band would perform in second class um it, they would give concerts a couple times a day on a on a set schedule uh the the ship's main band here uh led by Wallace hartley and later on in olympics life because titanic sank i have to remind everybody that in case they forgot uh, this would eventually be the area where you could um, be dancing to the band's music when they would add a saxophone, um, a couple more instruments in the, during the jazz era after the war. So mm. this is a nice little uh, dance hall for our passengers as well. Quick, quick fun fact. I just checked, and apparently, at least according to uh, our Britannic plans, uh, Britannic would not have had that corrected. It had a I, central mm -hmm. door in front of the mast. So and there's a reason for that, and that's mainly because... That's mainly because Titanic sank, and they needed to have that watertight door added there. Ah, uh, right, 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 right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can blame Titanic for that one. It can't have been a big deal. It's just funny. It's like, you know, you, you open the door, a nice, relaxing dinner. Maybe you've drunk a little bit too much wine, and you walk straight into the mast. <laughs> yeah, I can see that happening. We've all done it. That's why it's... Uh, yeah, who, who hasn't walked into a mast? <laughs> And um, just for those who have been keeping track, this is where we boarded just a little earlier, this little interesting enclosed promenade. Um, mm -hmm. Second class so originally was, had uh, more enclosed promenade, of course, but it was uh, deleted from, from B-Deck. You said earlier, Mike, that this would be uh, the area that second class would first walk into on the ship. So, well, actually, the forward entrance would be, but as they're walking around, they'd be first introduced to the library, which we haven't gotten to yet, but they'd be seeing these these entrances. Uh, this this is their first uh, uh, visualization and what their their first glance at their home at sea for the next couple of days. So it's a, it's a nice um, introduction to Titanic. It's a you beautiful will. introduction. And of course, you know, we're talking about second class being a central hub. And here is the elevator cab that we were that we were talking about. No, with no attendant, so unfortunately I can't go up or down. Nope. Maybe he finally is being allowed to play shuffleboard. Playing some deck games. First time. Yeah. Well, shall we walk into the library then? And have a little look, because 
this is an eye-achingly beautiful room that looks weirdly not Edwardian, I do have to say. Very kind of art deco looking. What's what's this space all about? I think it's, in my opinion, I think it has to do with the use of the two different wood types. Um, the dado, um, having the the dark wood below, which is made of mahogany, and the lighter sycamore, sacmore, sycamore wood above. Um, and with that um, contrasting use of the dark sacamore with the lighter sacamore wood is what really brings, I, I see the, the um, art deco feeling for those certain hourglass panels as well. Um, so this is a striking difference than you see a around the ship in certain classical rooms. For instance, like if you look at the first class lounge, because because essentially this is a lounge, not just a library, but it's the equivalent of Titanic's first class lounge where you'd go and you just read and socialize and play cards. This is what you do here too. You, you'd read, socialize, you'd write as well and play, and play some board games. Um, but that room on in first class was decorated like Versailles with ornately carved woodworks and oak and here you have this more modern looking room with touches of classical elements you have the, the small fluted uh, columns in the windows with uh, decorative leaves and floral um, garlands above but it's a it's a different designed room it's it's much cleaner and this is perhaps i would say my favorite room aboard the ship wow um, for that reason cool. it's got to be it's one of the few com carpeted. comfortable yeah it looks immensely car uh, comfortable and i was going to say probably like part of that is the, the carpeting because um weirdly people expect the ship to have marble floors or deep deep carpet and a lot of it is linoleum and tiled which i think is one of those things that might you know people might get disappointed about what were there many yeah, other Matt, would you like, public spaces would in you second like to... class like this? Mm, no, not like this. Yeah, this but is Matt, the only carpeted second class. Would you class. like to talk about why they loved linoleum so much? I'm fascinated by uh, linoleum. It... <laughs> it wasn't because it was new. It wasn't brand new, as many people like to say nowadays. Uh, linoleum was invented in the mid-1800s. I think it was... 1860 i believe and it was used in uh passenger ships for quite some time before t olympic and titanic um it was just this nice invention for flooring that wasn't that look that was rather robust and it wasn't expensive and the reason why we don't use marble on ships we don't use stone on in ships for the flooring is because it's very heavy and ships still need to be light um if you put a lot of marble on a ship especially the flooring you're going to in it on the upper decks imagine if the grand staircase had an entire level of marble flooring on the boat deck that will still add up um to the weight that's why a lot of the chairs are made of a uh, cane and wicker still they were doing a lot of they were doing mathematical equations to make sure that their ship was not top heavy uh they still do that today with these humongous cruise ships to make sure that they can equate the the ratio of glass balconies to uh, marble floors to make sure nothing is going topsy-turvy on there so one of the main reasons why we have the this cheaper uh lightweight linseed made um almost organic substance known as linoleum is because it was one, a relatively inexpensive material that they could outsource or produce themselves. And two, it was a, a light material that they could quickly um, install. Not because it was a luxurious brand new item that was um, revolutionary. And so they installed it all over the ship. And this isn't which like is... your, your grandma's 70s kitchen linoleum, which is a plastic synthetic. Like these tiles were heavy duty mm. and thick and beautiful beautifully made yeah and they were and they were well kept and sometimes they were also uh more or less shellac so they would have this shine on them when they were first installed um, we can see that and in a course, couple of photographs 
And of course, you know, it's the you know, same for marble floors if they had it, but you know, it's easy to clean. You know, that's why they went with that kind of flooring in some rooms. That's a lot of uh, people are making that comment actually in the uh, in the comments. My favorite comment so far. <laughs> Somebody for, for people in the UK, they'll make get a laugh out of this. Um, Alexander says it looks like a weather spoons. <laughs> Which oh my god, it does. Is not does, a compliment. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> It's not a compliment. It's a little <laughs> mean, but yeah. It's like a, a chain of uh, um, of sports pubs. But I think what's interesting about it is that it is so modern looking. Like it, it's... Except we didn't, wa- we didn't walk down like 17 staircases to find it, though. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's, it is just bizarrely modern. It's, I think it's got to be the most contemporary looking. Because you could probably find this, uh, you know, I, I would not expect... You know, I'd expect to see something like this in a in a hotel today. Um, the the kind of giveaway that you're on a ship is the the row of columns supporting the deck beams above, and you can actually just see the deck beams are kind of um, disguised right. with this timber paneling. But you see this all throughout the ship, and any of the big open spaces that essentially cover most of the width of, of the ship's beam, you see twin beams running, essentially, no, sorry, twin sets of these uh, columns with beams running down the, the, the line of the ship to support the deck above, um, which they, of course, cleverly cover in um, timber panelling and columns yeah. to make it look nice. Now, now this is an interesting to, to plug this into the structural model that's being made for <clears throat> THG. So, yeah, um, under all of this woodwork on the ceiling and the columns and everything is the steel structure. So above the ceiling, you'd have the regular deck plating. And then... All those beams, there's steel beams, channel beams inside there. Yeah, so those the woodwork has to be made around the beams. And then the fore and aft running kind of the large beam things that the columns are attached to, those are girders. They run fore and aft uh, underneath the beams and, you know, gives it extra uh, you know, support. And then, of course, yeah, steel steel columns, which behind there, it's just simple steel posts attached to a steel deck that's below the floor. Reminds me of seeing with their um... Oh, sorry, go on. Oh, just that, uh, yeah, that's the kind of stuff that kind of gets determined by the steel structure. Like, uh, how is this room made? Why is it made this way? Why are there columns here? Because of the structure. Even the door. I mean, uh, there's got to be a reason for this. Uh, sorry, I'm just fixated on the door. I'm just fascinated by this view. That we're just... I, I know. It's so weird. They could have... It's it's weird, but uh, one other thing, Matt, because uh, I'm not sure about this myself. How, because in the lounge and in here in the library, how did the thing work with books? If you wanted to read a book or check out a book, do you know how that worked? Uh, well, at each lounge or library, I should say, the library and the lounge had their own steward, and you would let me gra- let me grab my book that I have from. Was it Oceanic or Celtic? I forget. I'm holding a White Star Line uh, book. Obviously, these were taken off all the time from voyages, from passengers who, air quote time, uh, forgot to return them. Um, And they don't have anything in them that are like we have today in modern libraries, if anyone goes to those still, uh, where they have the little uh, card in the back where you stamp it and such. Pretty much... uh, I believe it still would have some sort of card, uh, but uh, this one's from the, I'm holding a book from the Baltic, from the White Star Line Library. And these books um, were just held stories that um, authors wrote, some famous stories, um, and they re- they would be bound in, a, in the same a binding that would say White Star Line. Um, so they all look pretty uniform. That's why the books there all look like they're the same book, just copied paste, because that's the... I wonder if we have the the correct... I think we do. We have the correct binding. There's a few variations of binding. But you could just go up to the um, library attendant and say, can I have a book, please? Uh, he, he'd, of course, keep a ledger of which book was taken out and by which passenger and which cabin they were staying in, because he would want to have all the books returned, because, like, everything on board the ship... It, there has to be a list and everything has to be noted where it's at at a certain time. And because it's all for the sake of making sure that the money is being tracked because the books are part of the company's property. 
So it's still essentially uh, a library system. And I don't know the exact like timeline you'd have, but I think you can just take you could take a book out for as long as you want, really, because they'd have a full library of books. And we have hidden there um, on the sides of the main bookcase. We just have drapes hiding mm -hmm. on either side. But in the lounge here, you could also purchase some um, other sundry items if you wanted to. I believe you could buy chocolates in the library here as you could buy chocolates in the first class uh, lounge. The first class lounge had two little candy cabinets along the boiler casing aft. And exactly where you're looking, Mike, which is probably now in the, the past, there is a picture of Olympic. And you can see inside, you can just make out a box of chocolates <laughs> and vases wow. for decorations. It's a nice touch. Mm -hmm. This this book that I have from uh, the Baltic, from White Sail and Baltic, it's, I, I, want, I tried to actually read the story. But the person who took the book drew a picture of a passenger who was also on board the Baltic um, in 19... And it turns out he was Sir Thomas Lipton from the Lipton Tea uh, like Empire. Wow. And so I was like, what? And so he... So Sir Thomas Lipton sailed on board the Baltic September 16th, 1922. And ironically enough, I'm drinking tea from... Lipton tea, America's favorite tea, with the Lipton tea bag in my teacup right now, and here he is, <laughs> drawn in caricature in this book from the White Star Line from the Baltic, and apparently some boy named Jack drew it in this book. So that's a very interesting little thing in this book that I bought. What a great! Yeah, that's I don't think the, yeah, that's I don't think the person who sold it actually opened the book to look at it because if they look, looked at it and saw. Sir Thomas Lipton here walking, they wouldn't have sold it for what they sold it. But yeah. A passenger named Jack doing sketches of other passengers sounds vaguely familiar, but I won't go into it. Um, there is a nice little nook. Oh yeah, it's true. That's true. <laughs> but luckily, luck, luckily Sir Thomas Lipton is wearing all of his clothes. All right, let's continue. <laughs> there's, uh, there's a nice little corner over here with a book open and uh, a wine glass. And that's set exactly where i would have set up and uh, the glass is empty which sounds about oh no it is it's got drink in it it's, it's still got wine mine mine would be empty by this point but beautiful detail but very lovely room and um obviously boarding you know passengers this is their first glimpse and they must be kind of peeking in or seeing the door open and thinking wow they must have been shocked because this is just this the quality of this space um is far above Weatherspoon's quality. I don't know what you guys are talking about. This is uh, this is beautiful. <laughs> Shall we descend to D deck and oh. Uh, oh. and check out the saloon? Oh, yeah. Let Let's head down. We'll go through the. I guess we can go through the forward stairs and go down the D deck. Let's do it. The deck. It's great that you've got these um, these plans set up here, so we can actually see where we are. For those watching at home, I'll show the layout the general layout of second class here so we're uh here on um c deck and you can see what i was talking about the two staircases um one forward one further off with the library in between and so what we'll now do is descend the, the forward staircase there past the elevator cab and it'll take us straight into the the uh the dining saloon which is quite interesting in fact why don't we I feel like we should use the aft stairs because, in theory, that's where the passengers would gather before um, dinner, right? Oh, yeah, a lot of them would. A bunch would oh, yeah. still want to take the elevator up, of course. And take but I feel like down. a lot would go to the to the entrance with the well. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, we were going to go through the uh, uh, the, the oh, forward yeah. because I forgot. The route. Kyle's the tour director. Yeah. Oh, we'll follow the plan. We'll go. We'll go down the forward staircase. That was that was the plan. There's a great um, story of uh, around around the second class dining saloon, which is was it Ruth Becker or one of the passengers who boarded? One of the younger passengers kind of poked her nose over the door into the windows and, and looked through into the uh, the saloon and saw all the silverware and everything. Oh yeah, glowing. that was Ruth Becker. Mm -hmm. Damn, I'm good. 
you know I'm all rivets and stuff. You know, I, I feel extremely proud when I uh, when I get passenger names right <laughs> because it's a rare occurrence. <laughs> um, so here we are. There's a little landing with the uh, the elevator here at the uh, the foot of the D deck stairs, and then we walk into again a um, very impressive room, but a very interestingly coloured room with some interesting choices on tiles and things. Um, who wants to run through this? Because this is quite a unique dining saloon on the ship, I think. Uh, no, Cal made it pretty. Note, a quick note before we continue is that uh, as far as models go, this room is very unfinished. There are so many details, especially around the windows that and the tops of the columns that are not in this demo. Uh, that'll be for the uh, final game, I guess. I mean, a lot of this is obviously derived from, um, you know, what we know about Olympic and what have you. But what's grabbing me straight away is the like the the rich kind of honey color of the of the timber, which is being really heavily accented by these uh, again very unique and interesting floor tiles. What are these about? Oh, about the floor tiles. Well, I can tell you that they're not made of stone or marble. <laughs> So we're seeing our old friend Linoleum again. Yes, we are, of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course, they, uh, <clears throat> yeah, they, they, they kind of did the whole. They kind of, at this point, they avoided the individual tables for a lot of the second class. So it's in this area, it's a lot more seating wise is a lot more like third class, just with nicer chairs, nicer table setups. Now someone's nice noticed. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, again, though, to be fair. This was standard for, for liners like, you know, we're working on Grand Voyage at the moment, the, the video game that we're, or virtual experience that we're working on. We're working on the Empress of Ireland. We've, um, Liam Sharp's been working really hard on the dining saloon that he's almost finished. And it's mostly communal tables. You know, there are some booths, but this was pretty standard for life at sea, even in first class during the day. Uh, weird side fact for what it's worth, just to highlight the differences in, in luxury between these two types of ship. Um, the uh, Empress of Ireland's dining saloon was bare timber decking. So it was like pine decking, like you would see on the outside of the ship, but with kind of carpet runners um, mm -hmm. running down the, the middle corridors. So you can imagine then passengers who might have sailed in first class to Quebec on board an Empress sister sailing second class on Titanic would have been mind blown by how beautiful and luxurious this is by comparison. I don't know if it's a fair comparison given Titanic was a fair bit old, uh, newer. But um, someone, someone on the in the comments there just pointed out something interesting about these chairs is that they have very, very narrow uh, feet. And how did they not tip over? Well, they are bolted to the deck. So these are held directly into the ship's deck and with swivel, which again is like a pretty standard uh, chair design for ships of that era, right? I mean, you would have seen these on probably most steamers of the time, I assume. They don't, oh, yeah. they don't. Not only do they swivel, but they also, uh, what's the, what's this motion called? They also they move, kind of move, slide, slide. They slide. So they could slide uh, have... backwards and forwards. Yeah. The, yeah. Well, well, not yeah. Uh, not at the feet level, but the but the seats themselves, they had a sliding thing. They could move around more. Wow. Oh. I didn't know that. I thought it was just a swivel chair. So they were actually able to like mm -hmm. uh, adjust how close they could get to the to the table. They could, yes. Makes a lot more sense. That part is not as well known, right? Until you sit on the chair and you're like, oh, I'm moving. Yes. <laughs> um, there are little plaques on the chairs where I assume there would be seating numbers. Was this one of those things where you were assigned your seat for the entire voyage? It is, yes. So you would be uh, told ahead of time pretty much like which table. Obviously, everything is numbered. You can see on the chairs the little ivory plaque, um, which would have a number. Everything's numbered here. The tables are numbered so that you'd be told like which. You'd be given a card. I, I think you're still given a card when you go on a cruise today. You're told like which table you're going to be sat at, and you give your card to the main steward when you arrive at the uh, 
dining saloon and he'll they'll walk you to your table and your seat and you sit down and, you, and then it's up to you to remember where the heck you're going to sit for the rest of the voyage and so you would make friends with your your table mates and hopefully you get lucky and you have a good um group of people that you can converse with for the next couple of days at sea was well, so the kind of thing that you could organize with the purser to get a different seat you know i mean how how flexible was this system do you know it's very important uh depending on who you were in second class uh you could complain a lot and hopefully you can get something um better uh we we've heard horror stories of it happening of certain individuals just saying to the steward or saying to their stewards and then talking to the purser saying like i don't i don't want to be in this cabin i don't want to be in this area please just move me um and they're they're relatively flexible especially when the ship is not overly uh filled up on the maiden voyage like it was they obviously could be more lenient then but if they have no choice if there's no nothing they can do they they won't do anything in first class uh depending on your prestige who you are um that can there's a lot of things that can there's a lot of variables that can change their tune more mm. or less what's that you know what i mean i know we're going to talk more about cabins in the future we're gonna have a whole episode dedicated to cabins upon cabins upon cabins but um there was uh if memory serves there was somebody who complained a female passenger who bought first class and was put in one of those kind of dank dual first second class cabins and didn't like it is that right uh, she was she was second oh no it was she was second class passenger uh, Amita Shelley I I believe that's how I I once knew how to say her first name it's an older uh, old person first name uh, but I just call her Mrs Shelley and she complained about her small prison cell of a cabin that was not providing her sufficient heat I believe it was the Titanic's heating. Uh, was not adjusted correctly so uh, it was either first class was too hot or second class wasn't getting enough heat something like that and so she wanted an upgrade she wanted some she wanted to be moved and everything was just going just wrong for her so she she complained to the steward and the steward tried to move her to one cabin and it wasn't good enough for her so she complained to the purser and the purser needed to move her to another cabin and she and that was better for her but it still wasn't perfect and then of course the next thing that happened to her that everything that made it just perfect for her was or perfect as in sarcastic was the ship started to sink and you know that's when the, the it just I, I was almost said a bad word but the crap hit the fan as we say here mm -hmm. um but yeah she had a, a good story and she of course was sick during this entire time too she said she uh, she was probably the biggest uh hope i'm not offending anyone but the biggest care on aboard titanic in 1912, 1912 terms i don't know what that would be but um yeah she, you know there were some small cabins in second class there were some small first class cabins but i can imagine her being in one of those inside cabins as you you said that were probably just as the size of like uh three meters by three meters less not even that size um two meters by two meters just the wow. size of a you just have your bunk you just have your bunk oh, a small wash stand and probably a folding seat and a wardrobe and that's it and you're just in there with one light bulb and it's just it's just you and probably i think she had a cabin mate as well she had her daughter with her but she could have just strangers with her she probably got so unlucky and and she was going to be vocal about it it's uh i noticed that the exhibition uh yesterday i know i talked about it a bit but it left an uh, impression on me but the um the, the the first class stateroom they've got set up and the uh the grand staircase and the corridors are recreations to give you the vibe of what it must have been like for these first class areas and they are massive and the corridors are really wide and they're carpeted and the staircase is huge and the cabin is massive as well but I, I have a sneaking suspicion, especially about the staircase. I think the staircase has been scaled up from what it probably actually mm -hmm. would have been. But especially those corridors and especially the, this, the cabins, because I think, you know, people had, had s different expectations back then, right? They weren't, 
maybe maybe um the passenger we're just talking about didn't so much have uh different expectations maybe she was a time traveler from 2023 but people were used to smaller space you know and i think if you were to present the grand staircase and the that first class cabin exactly as it was the general public going to the to this museum would kind of sit there and say oh well is that it really you know is that we're just now we we would imagine this huge space and of course they scaled it up for the film you know the set for the film in 1997 Mm -hmm. but now i think people it may just kind of burst the bubble a little bit which is actually what i love about uh this project especially is because there are rooms like this one here where i look at it and just think this is eye achingly beautiful like a, a lot of it is gorgeously made and and beautifully presented and very very luxurious and warm and comfortable but then there are other parts of Titanic, as you well know, for having designed, you know, made your plans and, and explored it, where you just kind of scratch your head and think, ha, huh, you know, the swimming pool, the first class swimming pool, <laughs> like just, you know, it's just, uh, they kind of put, took the foot off the accelerator in some places. It's, it's an interesting kind of ship, right? There's some sort of, uh, I don't mean to go off on like a spiel here, but there's some kind of um, contrasting moments where yes you have the first class promenade parlor suites and then you have these weird little to be fair prison cell you know if we're talking two or three meters by three meters that is not a lot of space right you know we we have a lot of media to blame for that like you said the titanic movies have over exaggerated the size of titanic you know and as you're walking through touring exhibitions or you know in one in melbourne right now they have to allow a certain number of people to be able to walk through these hallways for instance and you have to and one of the main reasons why you don't have titanic 2s recreated all the time are because they have to um listen to modern safety regulations you know if you if the ones that have grand staircases where you can actually walk up on they have to listen to the rules and and add a, a railing for instance that's why all these modern recreations where you can stroll on through are always bigger. But it's fun when we walk through this project and you go into, you go from a large space and then suddenly you're in this cramped area that's just white and there's nothing extravagant about it at all. And then you tell someone like, we're still in first class. And you're like, what? This is first class? Yeah, this is this is first class, and right over here is a first class cabin. Or, yeah, this is this this is a second class corridor, and it matches a first class corridor, and it matches a third class corridor, and it matches a crew corridor. They're all the same, um, and it was done for this reason, just because it was more efficient, it was it was economical, and this is what they did at the time. But then we still can just turn a corner, we open a door, and then suddenly the it looks like Titanic again, and it's and it's, but it looks like a Titanic that certain people would never imagine because it's a brand new space of a brand new area that has been ignored for years. Basically, a second class room. Yeah, and it's the beauty of and the beauty and the um, uniqueness that still exists in Titanic. Yeah, which is why Titanic will never die. Well said. Now, um. Mr. Carl Hudak, if you're still there. I hope so. We'll see. Because uh, if not, you can cover this one. But I am here. Beautiful. We're down on D-Deck. This is the dining saloon. Um, All right. Forward of us, there's a big bulkhead with the massive pantry complex, which is worthy of its own like talk. But um, I just wanted to ask if you could share the secret function of these portholes here. Because... Um, these massive portholes in the dining saloon have a a special function, as I understand. Special function? Uh, well, normal portholes, they would uh, have a hinge on top, and they would flip up, and you'd have to hold them up somehow or whatever. These portholes swiveled on a central axis vertically, um, top and bottom. I think there is a, a bit of a hinge thing going on, so you just unscrew the lock and then swivel it so you got the two uh, dogs on either side there that you can unscrew and then the, the porthole will as uh carl says they'll swivel inwards right so you can kind of pivot around 360 degrees and the benefit of this being that you can angle the porthole essentially into the direction of the ship's travel 
and it's a ventilating system. It will then, instead of just having natural kind of airflow, it will then force, because the ship's moving ahead at like 22 knots, right? 21 knots. You've got not wind coming in at 21 knots. So it's like, you know, 40 kilometers per hour, around 20 miles per hour. Um, and that's a lot of fresh air to get into this space. Very clever system, instead of having to rely on tons of ventilating ducts and things, you know, blowing air in, you can essentially just open these up and get this fresh air in. And um, what's interesting about their location here is that most of the portholes, this is the stuff I'm fascinated by. I don't, like Most of the listers will not be, I assume, not interested in this, but we're going for it anyway. Um, they're called the Utley pivoting um, side light. Do you know what the difference is between a side light and a porthole, by the way? It's not a trick question. I, I don't. Oh, good, because I don't either. Oh, uh, a porthole actually opens a side light and just be glass. Interesting. A side light can also be oh, just, just it's just a hole in the in the hull, basically, I believe. A side light. Can, oh no, that's a shell light. So yeah, it's just glass covering a hole. But a porthole actually has to be an opening hole, okay. more or less. So we'll, we'll these are as far cool as lights. I know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the structural guy. I'm the interior design the core thing okay we'll see if someone in chat can like chime in because i've seen them referred to as pivoting side lights or pivoting portholes but um it's a side light because it's still it doesn't open fully like the portholes do it's still technically in its um opening so it's just a pivot it's the no, side it's light which is the inwards. glass the side light itself is the glass and it's pivoting it's not it's not creating an opening that anything can go through that's a really good point um, if that makes sense yeah Fair play. All right. Well, I guess that's why I've seen them called sidelines. And um, just imagine, some, just imagine someone opening these portholes, going pivot, pivot. <laughs> the pop culture references have been absolutely. Early when you were talking about um, steel beams, I was like going to make a jet fuel joke, but I decided not to. The um, someone else did in chat. Someone oh. else did in chat. Yeah, I do it. So what's interesting is that the the portholes along D deck here are mostly your, your standard, um, fairly fairly decently sized because you're a bit higher up on the hull, but you know, your, your normal round portholes that you can open up. But they put these Utley pivoting side lights here in the dining saloon, which to my mind is fairly unique because the Utleys were further up on D-deck in passenger cabins in first class and up above that um, in C-deck. And essentially these were to get fresh air into uh, passenger cabins and so you see a lot of Utleys along the those spaces where you have passenger cabins and to my mind you may correct me if I'm wrong but I think this is one of if not the only public rooms that has Utley pivoting side lights to get fresh air in going through the list in my head yeah I believe so uh, because most there's most of the public rooms and public spaces aboard Titanic that are up on the upper decks are on the upper decks and not adjacent to the hull. They're more inside. Um, so yes, those the big dining saloons, which are as wide as the ship. Um, there's just two of them besides the third class one. And they just have the side lights on the side. And this is the exception. Um, the first class dining saloon has the the double the double ports the double um, top and bottom and, which are hidden behind the the lighted glass the, the beautiful lighted glass which allows in the natural light and then at nighttime or whenever they want to they turn on the 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 lights inside to illuminate it so yeah I think you're uh, yeah you're right it's just I love this stuff people are saying in the chat they think it's interesting so. That's good. That's reassuring. Somebody did ask about this little rolling uh, blind. Is that is that just essentially what it looks like? Just a blind that you can pull down to to cover the light. Ah, my favorite, my favorite little thing. Yeah, these roller blinds. Mm -hmm. So you can not just a completely them. like room darkening element, but just roll roll down to certain positions to provide some sort of um, aid to remove the sunlight. You can imagine, yeah, sunlight coming in here that would be quite warm. I, um, this is not at all related to, totally to Titanic. I thought you'd get a kick out of it. I was reading a story. This is probably one of those, like, 
sailor stories that is repeated over and over again but on a u.s navy warship that kind of like this you have these big um side lights and windows or portholes i guess in a in a mess area and there was a, a chief kind of like sitting back with his feet up on the table with the sun in his face and um the sun was changing positions as it does and so he was cast into shadow and uh he picked up a nearby telephone and ordered a course change by one point so that the sun would fall on his face through the window just right as it had been earlier <laughs> how much truth there is to that story is up for debate but it just uh <laughs> just reminded me was there anything else we wanted to cover in the uh in the dining saloon we i i, I mean it's, I assume this is the second uh you said there were two pianos this has got to be the second one here uh yeah that's the second one in there the second class uh, it is it's used funny. for uh, die for religious services and for playing hymns it's and such. The funny thing about the sideboard in here. Mm. Uh, well, first of all, I think it's lacking some details. But second, there's a photo mm. where you can see a reflection in the mirror of uh, on the corners of the sideboard with those arches where you've got the the big arch on the front meeting the small arch on the side. Uh, on the starboard side, behind the corner parts of that arch, uh, hidden from view, there was a, an, an electrical switch, and you could see it in the in the mirror reflection in one photo, and that was uh, that was a pretty exciting day finding that. Oh, I can just see it. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Oh, I've got it up on screen now. That's that is uh... flippy switchies. That is a nice detail. Yeah. I would assume that controlled lights in the sideboard like there would have been in the saloon. Mm -hmm. But who knows? Oh, we have it there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, I found it. I put it in there. Thank you very much. That's great. Oh. You can just see it. There, wow, that is a real hidden Easter egg. I don't I don't I would be surprised if anybody has spotted that so far. Look at that. Uh, other than that, I think that's about it in the saloon. We could now head aft, and mm -hmm. there are basically, we could, th the next three levels of the aft staircase, uh, it's just stairs and corridors. So if you want to run around on um, D, uh, E, and F decks, and just run, run, run around run, the run, corridors run, 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 run. for a few minutes, go ahead. Just to remind people where we are, um, the deck above us is the the mast deck if you will so this is where the mast is intersecting through the superstructure and so we're directly below the ship's aft mast which means there's probably about what do you reckon like uh 200 feet of ship behind us to still explore oh this is the thing that i was telling you about <laughs> this is the thing that <laughs> katie was playing the game and she's having a look around and she's like huh mike what's this little thing here why is this at a weird angle and i was like well darling let me tell you that's the furiously looks at titanic <laughs> honor and glory plans that's a locker <laughs> that's funny um do we know like first of all how did you know this was here was I this marked out that. on any plans well none none of titanic deck plans but it was on olympic deck plans look they there was a a this is a, a large corner, and on board a ship, you want to utilize as much space as possible. That's like one of that's like cardinal rule number like twenty three. Like empty space, fill it up with something. You're, you're definitely gonna want to put like a locker there to store linens, um, life jackets, lamps, whatever. So, um, looking at Olympic plans throughout the years, this corner locker existed. It didn't so uh, Titanic deck plans are so sparse of any detail um, when they're not actually just copies of Olympic deck plans. Um, so I don't you you only you only use those as your base and then you you go from there. So you just use Olympic throughout the years. If something's stuck throughout the entire time, or if you have evidence that it was there throughout from like 1912 around the time at, right after Titanic sank, there was a there's a good chance that it was on Titanic as well. You have you have to use a lot of like 
um, thinking to figure out if it was on Titanic or if it was influenced by the Titanic disaster and then put on tight uh, and then put on Olympic. Mm. So that's how you figure out like, okay, yeah, they, there was a good reason that, you know, this corner was just way too wide. They could have utilized it to put in more storage space for linens for this section of uh, cabins. And that's why we now have this linen locker here. So if you are, I'm going to plug it again, if you are interested in getting a set of Titanic Honor and Glory deck plans, which you can explore Titanic, Olympic, or how Britannic was going to be fitted out as a passenger ship in 1915, if the war never uh, came to pass, you can visit TitanicDeckPlan.com, and right now you can get 25% off... Um, for one day using the amazing discount code that we are using friend mike brady all in capitals all one word because we're all here for ladies and gentlemen your friend mike brady while while you were doing that i was like mining out the actions of a game show host yes it was invaluable it was super useful it was looking, useful, yes. Looking Cause, through because uh... James Cameron bought some frames too. Yeah. <laughs> this is um. But yeah, where we're at. So this is uh, second class uh, corridors, right? Oh, is this this is second class, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 All second class. So, yeah. Second I was waiting class. for it to catch up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can see yeah, that we we're heading towards the stern of the ship because the 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 angle now it's of the... a bit the hull is beginning to cut inward um, and it gets more and more severe the the more the closer you get Mm -hmm. to the stern of the ship um but we were talking earlier about finding kind of sterile spartan copy paste spaces and then walking into glorious titanic area and this has got to be one of those where you've just got pretty you know bare right you've got bare ceilings um so that's just deck beams above and then you walk into like beautiful timber paneling at the end of the corridor into the staircase. Yeah, this is kind. Of, sorry, this is kind of like what we're talking about. How your, your average Titanic area is this tight, white, cramped space, and then suddenly you turn to your right, and then <gasps> beautiful oak wood. Yeah, lovely wood. Lovely mm-hmm. wood. Um, lavatories here at the end of the corridor, um, of course. We've talked about this as well in, in first class, but um, wherever you have passenger cabins, you have communal toilets because yep. this is not the era of en-suites. There's no second class cabin that has an attached to- toilet to it whatsoever. It's just such an interesting kind of labyrinthine area and uh, I, kind of depressing, I guess, having a having an inside cabin in a space like this. But, you know, I mean, if you're you're sailing for what five six days uh you'd be spending a lot of time out of your cabin i assume and that's why they have such yeah, beautiful public well, to mrs shelley yeah 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 another thing that was uh is very weird about this space is that because we're on d deck uh you know it's got these almost this these disorientingly high ceilings it's weird it was d deck was about was it 12 feet i think i remember it was like one of the the tallest decks on the ship, right? Ten and a half feet high from beam to beam was D deck. Mm. So you're I I can't tell you that in uh, metric, everybody. I have to use American Freedom units, but yeah, it's 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 the tallest one besides the 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 two uh, public rooms on A deck that they made taller the, the smoke room and the lounge so it's just yeah. enormous especially with these cramped corridors you almost look like you're a a miniaturized uh individual like shrunk by a shrink ray in a skyscraper or something you just look like you're in this weird dystopia yeah so strange but, who let who let wayne Zelensky on titanic sorry <laughs> I sh- honey I sh- we shrunk ourselves that was the sequel, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, shrink everyone. Then we can. Just then we can, we can. Yeah. I used to. I used to imagine shrinking myself, and putting myself on a Titanic model. Oh, uh, that was always a little imagination of mine back then. You've kind of yeah. done it, really. I mean, 
this is I mean yeah. Put our, yeah. Put, just put ourselves in the machine. That's a, <laughs> that's ironic. The last movie I watched was that Matt Damon movie movie called Downsizing, and I don't know if I liked it or not. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, down. <laughs> Speaking of down, Speaking whatever. Of we're on. We're on E deck and a deck, and here we've got a very unfinished. Um, what do you call that? Ankory office over mm-hmm. here. Yeah, the, the purser's uh, office. Right? Yeah, purser's office. Yes, yeah, so all that stuff. This is where you'd sort out all your your, your deck chair, booking your deck chair at the start of the voyage, mm-hmm. your chits, dropping off valuables. Um, was it as... Oh, actually, here's one for you. Um, did it have pneumatic tubes to get to the Marconi office? I assume not, because it this is a long way back. No. 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 Yeah. Yep. N- none of that. Mm-hmm. You second class still... aren't that important no there's not yeah i uh it's I, I i think the jury's out if you could send a message um from second class or not still i think that's up for debates i mean obviously money can buy you anything but still uh, i don't think there was like a there's three it's it there's three windows here as you can see like three areas for for like transactions or uh the last one of the last rooms we were talking about we spent a long time talking about what happens at the inquiry office like you walk up you say like i need to send a, a marconi gram i need to deposit something into the safe or i just have a question about deck chairs and then you move to a certain window here and that's so you have three main things that occur at that first class office and here once again there's three windows where maybe three things could have even though usually from the one from the evidence that we have in the one photo of Olympics, where we have passengers who are actually models posing, we have just one purser at duty, and I think two of the windows up and one of the windows down. I'm not—I can't remember off the top of my head. Mm. So it, it's a much smaller office, and you wouldn't have that much uh, activity. But you know, you did still have there's still a, a, a large safe back there for depositing of jewels because, you know, as Kyle said before, you have. Uh, it's a large um, group of people traveling in second class who would still dress up for dinner with their jewels and such. Um, there'd be money who, that would be deposited. Um, and you'd still have to get deck chairs. They'd still be wanting um, to exchange money for different currencies. And, you know, there'd still be the general shipboard um, requirements that would be needed for like a, a hotel type office, which essentially a purser's office is. It's the It's the front desk, if you will. And this is the one of the second class's front desks. There's multiple little like inquiry windows throughout second class. That's how um, spread out it, it is essentially um, for dealing with the second class passengers. You'll see a couple more of them. Yeah, it's it's you know it's a ship is a functioning city. It's like a small floating town, right? It's amazing to think there would have been so many passengers. We have this tiny little area to to service them. Um, a few of the uh, people have been asking about these fountains here. Um, this is really oh, interesting. Oh, yes. Yeah, please. Uh, I'm going I'm 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 to leave by. Uh, yeah, so first of all, uh, these fountains, the, the models you see here, they're terrible, they're bad, they suck. Don't look at them, and, pretend they're not there. Okay, I'll stare all the, wrong, they're they're the way the back wrong, here. There we go. They're, in the, they're in the wrong spot, too. That's why I wanted to leave. But also, Matt. Matthew. Matthew, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, here. I'm, yeah, I'm here. Uh, talk about the fountains on Titanic. Oh, thanks so much. So yeah, the, you'd find water fountains such as that. A um, th- couple of types: uh, the the cupless drinking fountain and just a, a drinking fountain, which is, would require some sort of cup to fill up um, and then drink from. All connected to like water coolers or water filters you see some in the well on the aft well deck you see uh, uh if you're any of you are modelers out there who are really de- detailed modelers you'll see them on the aft aft well deck there's just these two little are there two i uh, know there's at least one that there's a uh, exterior um water fountain but you have we, we've noticed um thanks to olympics piping plans and such that there are water filled water, uh, water fountains spread throughout the ship often on e-deck several other places 
point being is that this is probably uh, where stewards would fill up the water that would go into all of the other uh, like folding lavatories for the passengers. Titanic's upper class, first class cabins um, that were, had plumbing, hot and cold, running tap water. However, there were so many hundreds of other cabins where they would have to fill up a, a chamber of water to allow them to have water that was flowing somewhat. And to get that water, uh, they'd use either the service rooms or they would use these little water fountains that were spread throughout the ship and they would fill up the carafes and put them on the folding lavatories and say like this is the water that you use for filling up your your tumblers and to drink the, your glasses to drink from and they'd cover them up and again if it's the middle of the night and you you're in second class and you don't want to call your steward or if you're even in first class there's a water fountain on titanic that would that's probably just right outside the elevator lobby um you could just walk up to it with your your white star line glass and just turn the knob and fill up your glass and take a sip of water. Uh, mm -hmm. It's essentially just a, an easy way for make sure that passengers are, get the required mental uh, needs aboard the ship. The idea I hope that's of what running you want water. Me to talk about Kyle. Yeah, it's it's really interesting, I think, because this is again just one of those things we take for granted. Like we were talking about the clocks just earlier, and yes, the clocks do work. By the way, you can see we've got about just over ten minutes of our um, stream left, according to this clock. But the um, the idea of running water is just one of those things that we take for granted now. But fifty, sixty years before Titanic, which is not long, um, you would have had massive casks that were in the hold of the ship that could spoil or. Um, that you know basically would have been filled by by the crew and stewards and then dis dispensed that way but on titanic you know you've got a very very complicated um fresh water system salt water system hot and cold um salt water tanks for this the pipes on the funnels um that we you know you see titanic's funnels and you see these big kind of like inverted u-shaped pipes running up most of the height of them and that's to provide essentially just gravity pressure from gravity to to keep the the water pressure up for these mm -hmm. types of um taps it's just you know titanic for you know the ships of this caliber were spaceships of their time it's just fascinating <laughs> lusitania and mauritania had you know were about six seven years older and they'd, they'd done it back then but it's just just one of those things i think that marks out a ship like this as being so forward thinking um and surely revolu revolutionary i mean it's just amazing to think oh, of yeah. the jump in technology you know yeah. Oh, uh, we could. I think there's one more level below us. Cool. At the deck. We could. Uh, that will give us a really cool view up. Well. Oh yeah, up the stairs. Good shout. And there's and there's a few more corridors too. Okay. So we'll have a look up here because yeah, we've got about ten minutes left, and um, what we'll do is we'll we'll kind of find. I'm sure we'll find a way to fill that ten minutes. Beautiful view looking up the uh Oh, well, well the once we're done down on F deck, we can head back up to E and then go forward through those curtains. There's one last thing to see. Let's do it. But yeah, this is yeah. another uh, kind of copy-paste passenger space down here on, on F deck. We'll walk around real quick. Most, most of Titanic was yeah. copy-paste. Yeah. And just take it from other ships. Sorry, everybody. A few exceptions. Well, there is a little service window here on the um, where aft. So that's got to be the starboard side of the F deck. Or is it port side? I'm actually so lost. My goodness. Am I facing I forward? Think the it's... stairs face forward. So this is port side, right? That, that's starboard side. <laughs> this is why I need uh, well, your deck I'm, plans. I'm, I'm watching, a, deli I'm watching a delayed com. stream. Yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you can't walk through... Project 401 demo for 401 without the Titanic deck plans. Nine Titanic. out of ten doctors use Titanic deck plans from titanicdeckplan.com. Input your code. Can't read. Friend Mike Brady today for a fair discount. What is um, yeah. at the foot of the stairs? What is this uh, this service window here? What's this about? Yeah, that, that leads into uh, one of the second class stewards' rooms. I think it's the assistant second class steward, um, and it's just an, an inquiry office uh, window. So many of the stewards um, for second class uh, just had a desk. And for general questions, you know, uh, they had other duties. So this is probably open during certain hours when they were um, 
not attending to other tasks aboard the ship just for the sake of and also probably really efficient when the ship was um, at port and on boarding days uh, the steward would be uh, having his office hours if he wasn't running around um, helping passengers to um, find their cabin and such so um, this is one of the areas you'll fi we'll find another one once we go further forward on e deck as well for the chief second class steward so the main two stewards uh, their offices the chief second class steward and the assistant uh, second class steward their rooms double as offices which passengers could um visit more or less that's cool through these windows oh let's do it yeah. we'll head through oh. those uh, curtains you were talking yeah, about wait uh if you haven't had through the curtains yet have you and i found my deck plan just walked I through for the whole time just that second oh, did okay. you want me to go back no no you don't need to are you sure it sounds like it could be a cool point <laughs> oh yeah as a i'm always a weird completionist so i was like why don't we go up to d deck to the uh into the forward stairs and then go down because it's weird cutting through these areas but that's fine no no we, so we basically there, there there would there, there would have been a section of corridor there uh but it's not in the demo so we put in that little shortcut all right i'll no i'll do it i'm walking through i've gone back up to the saloon and i'm going to walk to the forward stairs and then we can go down from that way and, and make a grander entrance you know oh now i know what you're talking about it's like which area let's do it oh, the yeah. tiniest little area the dicky little space here we are there we go that's better <laughs> I, I, I love the little space on d deck where you for those stairs they were always fascinating to me or you remember matt when you had more fancy like pediments or something above the doors yeah i made it really super awesome in there now it's just plain crap sorry sorry my life with titanic i mean they get fancy at first and then we're just like mm, so, too fancy like right here i mean so this is an interesting there, space hey because clearly this is another mm -hmm. main uh, entrance point yeah. on the ship. Yeah, this would have been, I think, one of the you know, the lowest sort of main entrance for second class. And there's a thing on the ceiling there. It's um, I'm not mad. I'm not sure what where, was our evidence for that, but it's, yeah, it's uh, a, it's, it's the twenty foot accommodation ladder, and it's stored above. Yeah, so, so a you can large see the the railing for the accommodation stair. ladder is folded down, and essentially the way these work is you can actually um, rig them to the side of the 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 ship and provide um you know a ladder right. for people to get um, up and, and down, there's right? a and there's a hundred percent evidence for that aboard titanic because the pulley to use that ladder is visible um in photographs of titanic leaving queenstown yeah and of course they had to store it somewhere so uh, why mm -hmm. not in here uh so of course the, the this block, area the block and tackle. yeah so of course this area we used to have it way more fancy in early early versions of uh, THG or um, Lost in the Darkness and all that. Um, Lots of wood. Yeah, yeah, a lot of wood. But now it's a lot more plain, just around the stairs. So of course we got one of three maps on the ship that's in front of the stairs, mm -hmm. and the last space to really see in all of this in second class. And, and this is the other thing we do not have any second class spaces in the demo for project 401 we're not going to add anything to the demo uh for project 401 we're looking to hopefully maybe add the last remaining couple of second class spaces that you'd really want to see and that's barbershop and uh, uh, maybe a couple of cabins because we have no second class cabins but if you want to get kind of closest to seeing something like that you could look at look at this room this crew room this is a typical kind of crew cabin that you see around and what whose cabin was this matt oh this is the other this is the chief second class steward as i was talking about before with the assistant second class steward you know you have his accommodations here a, a bunk a folding lavatory a wardrobe dresser but he also has a desk for when he has to do paperwork and ledgers and such, but he has a window that he can open up and look out on and answer questions of a, of a passenger passing by, you know, or something like that. This just seems nightmarish to me. Like, 
this is where you, you know, the one time you get away from passengers, you fall asleep and you just hear, <laughs> Stuart, Stuart, I demand a new oh, no, room. <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's, it's just Imanita Shelly just there, just yelling at you, banging on the window. <laughs> I don't like it. It's too hot. I'm sure there was there was appropriate signage of his hours somewhere posted. Oh yeah, they, they like the Wait, post signs Mike, like that. Let's, let's get back up to the boat deck, get some fresh air, get out of here. Yeah, let's get out of here. There, uh, so one uh, one YouTube user, Flamin' Wheels YT, is like just begging for some reason for me to show a chair. So I'm just going to show these uh, these wicker chairs just to really you know satiate the chair appetite. I know you guys have wanted some some chair action, and there you go, there they are. I I think he said he, I asked what chair do you want to see, and he's been screaming in, in full caps like, and he just said, Stuart, I demand a chair. There's a chair. You know, why, why, if you why, want why to see... the texture is see-through. Uh, Eric! I need an answer. Anyway, <laughs> okay. so, um, if you want to see the chairs yourself, you can download this demo for free at titanichg.com. I don't know the exact button you click. You cl click one of the buttons. It's somewhere. It's, it's a little weird. Uh, yeah, check it out. Now I have to go look. I, I spent hours you'll in want this. To, yeah, so you'll want to go to titanichg.com and then hover over the About tab and go to... No, that's not... Why do we not have Demo 401 on here? Okay, you'll want to go to Project 401, click that, and you'll find the download for Demo 401 there. Yeah, you'll, you'll lose yourself in this. And it's all little details, like this here. I mean, a map of White Star Line. Um, steamers and you see it's not just the transatlantic trade of course that's probably the most impressive one and the ones we're most familiar with but of course they ran services from Liverpool uh, to to you know out of Liverpool Liverpool to Quebec you can see here down to Australia I mean White Star Line has visited my hometown of Melbourne the uh, the Jubilee class liners you can see great photographs with them down here in Australia so you, no matter where you are in the world chances are that if you live near a near a coastline, a an, a steamer of the White Star Line or associated with the White Star Line through the International Mercantile Marine probably probably visited, especially through this big hub here in the Mediterranean. And so this is the kind of stuff that you will lose yourself studying and and learning about. So yeah, absolutely could not recommend this more because uh, pretty remarkable that you've got what was this estimated at about what fifty percent of Titanic um, available to. Uh, to explore for free. Oh, yeah. yeah, roughly fifteen, roughly fifty percent of the interior and exterior kind of deck space explorable. It's a little less than that, I think. Some of it's visible, but yeah, it's every well, as, as, aside from the second class barber shop, every single public room is explorable in this, as well as probably every type of engineering space that you can either partially explore or at least see except for like the shaft tunnels and the dynamo space we'll have a lot of fun doing the engineering spaces because i know especially you and i kyle are big oh uh, yes I, I barely know anything about engineering at this point <laughs> but i will try to sound like i know what i'm talking about and then uh, people in the chat will uh, yell at me We've um, we've just emerged on the boat deck and we're looking down at uh, at first class and third class here. But uh, you know, it's it's a very interesting class. Like I said, like we were talking about earlier, because it's so compact. It's everything you need is right there. It's extremely comfortable. I think you'd be very ha happy traveling on second class. And then you at the, you know at the top of it you get this really beautiful open um, open promenade deck. And what's really interesting, I think, is that. A lot of liners of the time had deck houses along here that extended basically to the edge of the where the, the lifeboats are. So you, you had very little open kind of promenade space. But famously, you know, Titanic um, had a lot of powered ventilators so they could get rid of, you know, the, the old style of, of, of vents that would kind of draw, you know, fresh air down into the stokehold to the boiler rooms. And you get this these raised roofs over spaces like the the first class smoking room which is what we're standing on top of now that is accessible to passengers and you have this nice 
open space where you can just lie down and relax and you know, you're covered in wires and there's lifeboats there and things like that from up here you get a very nice view of the ocean and um it kind of does a little bit i think to defeat that myth of they deleted lifeboats purely for for a good view because you have a good view of the ocean you can see it from up here it's it's fine you know i don't i don't i think this is an extremely comfortable space for passengers and um yeah getting able to being able to explore it like this is uh it's fascinating did all right between between you the two of you who worked on the on the game and maybe jack who's animated it a bit through his time we'll go in order but was there anything about second class in particular that shocked or surprised you while you were working on it maybe we can start i don't know if you wanted to chip in we'll start with say matt because he's he's an interiors guy mainly was there anything about second class in particular that you just had no idea about or just shocked you when you started out uh, i thought it would be a lot easier and simpler to recreate but then when you when you really look at it it's it's just as detailed and complex as first class in my opinion there's just the little att uh, attention to detail that they put into all these uh public rooms of the ship like the first uh the th the the paneling in the uh, second class library, for instance, I got to see the that paneling from uh, Britannic in a private house before it was sold, and finally looking at the the, the carvings, not just the panels that we saw earlier that were the hourgla hourglass uh, Art Deco ones, but the the columns and the pilasters and the door frames, and seeing it up close and and it was so different than. Um, the, the, at the time, we had just poor scans of photographs. You finally see, like, wow, there's there's so many little tiny hand-carved elements to each part of the rooms that they had to essentially do in triplicate for the three sisters. Um, and so I think while recreating Second Class, um, for me, it, it brought me more... Um, admiration for the craftsmen at harlan and wolf mm. yeah i can see why i think it's because we're so unfamiliar with it i think is as a community in general enthusiasts about the ship i think it's shockingly beautiful <laughs> just surprisingly beautiful kyle did you i mean you know in, in your research and, and working on this were there things about second class that um that surprised you at all uh, nothing really surprising. It's, nothing's really shocked me, uh, except I guess maybe that when you kind of really look at it on maps, it really isn't that much of the ship. Like mm -hmm. third class and first class take up so much space and you know stretch across so many areas, and then second class, you know, as we talked about earlier, it's just so compact and stuffed into this one little vertical column of the ship. It's it's a weird kind of area. Yeah, it's cozy, you know, compact, easily accessible. Very interesting. I think um, Jack had a, uh, a point you wanted to make about second class. Oh, I do. So, this goes back many years, but when I first got into Titanic, all my school teachers knew about it, and we did a topic, we did a whole three months on Titanic, and they made me teach the class for a lot of it. And I knew what first class looked like from the film, I knew what third class looked like, I knew all of that. Did not have a clue about second class. I have never, up until, I think it was up until this demo came out, maybe two years ago now, I had no idea what second class looked like. I don't know why, I just never Googled it. Um, and then once I got in the demo, I was like, oh wow, it's like, because you, you, you don't, you, you never hear about it much. You see all the first class, you see third class, you never see second class in anything until this, really. And then, it's it's just gorgeous, like the like I could talk about for hours how gorgeous second class is. It's very cozy, it's compact, but it's still got that luxury in it. Like the saloon has those gorgeous colours, the library's really cozy, but it's still got those different lovely types of wood, it's still got carvings. It's just the most unknown but beautiful space on Titanic, I think. Like it rivals first class in certain areas, especially the saloon. I do prefer the saloon in second class, I think, to the first class saloon, yeah. which might be controversial. 
but it's just so cozy. It is extremely cozy. I agree. Uh, it's it's, so it's nice. interesting standing here, right? Because um, a couple of things are having just gone to the artifact exhibition yesterday, and I don't know how often they change the the, the roster of artifacts, right? But there's actually a lot of things in this exact view that I saw yesterday in real life, right? So for those who've been, they have one of these deck lights. They've got one. It still has the light globe in it. The bulb is shattered, but you can see the bayonet fixture is still in it. Um, and the wiring is ripped out of it and it's in perfect condition. And it's still actually got the white painting on the inside to reflect the light, the light out of it. They've got one of these deck benches all twisted up, sitting directly in front of the, the light here. They've got one of the um, cargo hooks, and a, 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 it looks like an iron cargo hook, maybe one of the ones from the, the main cranes. And uh, the thing that I was really touched by, what I thought was fascinating that you guys might have seen, is they've got one of the big, um, I think it's a bit, but one of the, the cross-shaped bits that were bolted to the deck that they actually used to, to lower the boats. And um, if you go to the exhibition, and if you've seen it in the past, you'll notice that one of the corners of this bit is ripped off now this is a solid cast iron you know piece of metal and it's been ripped off the deck possibly when the uh the funnels were you know the, the the shrouds for the funnels which are these massive cables that held them to the deck were ripping up and down and we know they tore off davits and things like that but one of these was ripped off and you can see a corner of it has just been torn apart um and the pro probably even left behind on the deck when it got ripped away but it's just really interesting standing here and um it's so familiar because i just saw it yesterday it's it's really bizarre and uh, beautiful seeing it fresh and new and painted white and clean and uh yeah it's it's uh it's sad it was it was really touching i'm sure a lot of you guys who've been to the exhibit would be um yeah would be would be moved as well so yeah highly recommend it and um definitely download titanic honor and glory Get, uh, get Demo 401, because you'll lose hours of time exploring the Titanic. Well, that was a um, super enjoyable uh, two hours. Gents, thanks so much for, for joining us. Um, I think it was great looking into second class. We've had a great time at first, and there's still more of first class that we have to check out. But I think we've basically come to the consensus that we'll do an episode probably dedicated to cabins in particular, because then what we could do is compare first and second and third in one easy episode. Um, maybe we could do that next next stream if you guys would be interested in it. I think cabins would be would be a great place to look. Cabins are fun, yeah. I like that. Oh idea. yeah, and we'll get uh, second class finished with that, I suppose. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be great because I think you know just oh. getting that comparison first, will help. First class, yes, first class. Finish first class, yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us, guys. Um, it's been great having you all. Um, I'm going to switch over to uh, my full headshot so I can then um, close the stream off. But yeah, thanks so much for joining us, THG team. Great to have you. Um, I hope next time we can get um, yeah Derek along, James, if he can make it. James is sick, unfortunately, so sorry that you couldn't make it, mate. And Derek's computer decided to explode. So, um... oh, yeah, yeah, Derek's, uh, he, you know, he's still chugging away to try and to, well, at the moment, not quite for yeah. the... Uh demo update because yeah his computer decided just to just sort of sort of um stop working i don't know I've, one time i had that problem and it turned out to be the motherboard and i think that might be the case here but the point is computers they're very annoying yeah um they are but anyway yeah uh, you know thanks everyone for being here and watching us and all that and listening to us rambling about crap and uh, thank you. Uh, thanks very much to our public universal friend, Mike Brady, for having us here. I've got a lot of comments yeah, recently Mike. of people saying, ease up there, Snowflake. Friendship is earned. <laughs> and um, oh my, my favorite thing to do is to respond in full caps. Friendship is mandatory. <laughs> That's appropriate. That's good. <laughs> uh, one, more, one more time. Um, titanicdeckplan.com I think the code is friend Mike Brady is that right? friend Mike Brady brilliant share that with everybody um, I'm going to go quiet 
and um, thanks so much for joining guys really great interacting with you all I've been kind of keeping on top of some of the comments coming through uh, had a lot of fun really enjoy these we'll try and do one of these again sooner rather than later because I always have a real kick get a real kick out of doing them until next time ladies and gentlemen stay safe and stay happy and I'll see you again if you're in Melbourne go and check out the Titanic artifact exhibition you won't be disappointed you'll recognize a lot of a lot of the Titanic. See you again. Ciao.